The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 726. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have an amazing lady on the show today. She is a marketer, a storyteller, and also a foodie and writing fanatic, and I'm really excited to have her on and share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Jamie Lee. Jamie, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Sure. Hi. Thanks for Thanks for reaching out. I'm excited about this this session with you. Yeah, a little bit about me. I love creative writing and I love food and I feel like those interests have gotten me into where I am now where I work at Paired Hospitality Technology Startup where I do all of the marketing and content and then outside of that I happen to interview ramen chefs for my blog. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Jamie, what's your cultural background? Yeah, so I am Chinese American. I actually was born in China. And I was the second child under China's one child policy. That's a fun fact. And grew up there when I was three, my family moved to New York. And after that, lived there for a couple years and then moved to Seattle and Yeah, I'm a naturalized citizen, but I was originally born in China. Thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? Oh, I have a bunch. So there's my favorite one is comparison is the thief of joy. That one I always refer back to a lot. I think it's probably because I fall into that comparison trap a lot. Maybe that's why it resonates. And then Another one that I like a lot is um, confidence comes from just doing it anyway. Thanks for sharing those great quotes. And I think being Asian, just the compare game is just always so strong. (laughs) You know, always being compared to your cousins, your sister, students at school. I mean, it's like we've been programmed to compare ourselves all the time, not realizing like it really hurts us. And when we can let go of that, the more we can live for ourselves versus for others. So thanks for sharing those great quotes. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? I would say self-confidence is this feeling where you have your own back and you just know yourself so well that you also trust in yourself. And that feeling is so strong that it pushes out any moments of doubt or kind of that inner inner critic that tends to creep in so it's where you just feel and you're like radiating this just self-assurance that kind of pushes everything out and I feel like that would be my definition of self-confidence thanks for sharing that great definition and Jamie what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence So it's funny because I feel like it's such an ongoing process for me. Like I can't say that right now I am this 100% self-confidence radiating person when I'm walking down the street every day of my life. Um, Definitely an active process. But I would say um, before that discovery and kind of really um, trying to tap into it or build it, my life was totally defined by this very active and vocal inner critic. I think tying it back to the Asian American piece, my parents are the very typical Asian immigrants and pretty intense upbringing where they expected a lot out of me. And so they did that thing where if there was like a family function, they would always compare like the cousins or the kids with each other just openly. And so I feel like because of that, it kind of like internalized this inner critic voice. So I think before building uh, and becoming aware of my own self-confidence, it was defined by a very vocal, loud inner critic. Thanks for sharing that. I think 
you know, we all go through that, that inner critic, you know, we become our own worst enemy, always thinking the worst of everything. But what was that point in your life when you realized you were more than enough to go out there and be who you are today, have that confidence? What was that aha moment? Mm, So for me, it really came in when I decided to go to therapy. And it was actually a decision that came out of a really, really horrible breakup that I had in 2016. And I, in doing all of that and going to the visits and doing all the work, I realized so many things about myself, like how my upbringing informed how I approached relationships, how to recognize moments when I am advocating for my needs or I have my own back or not. And also figuring out how to draw boundaries and being vocal about things like that. And it is something that I actually continue to do to this day because it's kind of like having a personal trainer, but for your brain and your mind. And yeah, and I'm also fortunate in that I have an employer that provides health insurance that covers a substantial portion of the of the sessions. So I'm lucky in that way. But I think for folks who are able to access it, I think it's I can't stress how how important doing that self work has been. And but more specifically, I think my aha moment with my therapist was when we did this exercise where we had my uh, where we took my inner critic's voice and then did this exercise where Uh, we actually personified it. And I'm a big journaler and I love writing. And so I kind of gave it this very like comical caricature and then gave her a name and described how she wore just like really ugly elf shoes and kind of these like horn rimmed glasses and has like a creaky witch voice. And it got so exaggerated and I found myself laughing and it still kind of makes me smile. And I feel like putting putting that voice in that kind of box has really zapped it of its power. And so that's something that I try to draw upon when I'm looking for that well of self confidence. Thanks for sharing that. And you know, because of that, what's your life been like now? That's a good question. I mean, like I mentioned before, it still is very much an active journey. I think coming out of therapy sessions, it's kind of equipped me with the tools to not have that inner critic voice take over and have it kind of drive a lot of where my thoughts go. But I think now it's kind of like, I realize that there is a choice that if I'm faced with a challenge, I can get really overwhelmed, or I can choose a path where I trust myself and know that I'll come out of it and it will have gone great at best or if not like I will have learned something and that's totally okay and so I think after um, a discovery like that it's feeling like empowered and there's more of a sense of having a handle on yourself and your choices and knowing that you'll make it out and you'll be all right. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And, you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey to self-confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? Let's see. Something that has really, really helped me a lot is just knowing that if you, when you look around, no one has their shit together at all. And it's the kind of like, I feel like it's almost this universal fact. Everyone is trying their best. No one ever feels like they have it all together. And if they do, if they are acting like they have it all together, then like maybe stay away from them. (laughs) But yeah, I think everyone's on their own path and not everyone has their shit together. I feel like most people don't. And in moments when you really don't feel like you have your shit together, just reach out. And I feel like talking to other people always makes me feel better. So Thanks for sharing those great tips. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do or check out some of your work or your food picks, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yeah, absolutely. So the blog that I write at about ramen, it's called ramentality.com, like ramen and the word mentality. And then for Instagram, my handle is ramenwriter, 
all one word. Thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Jamie, you can also head on over to the TaoofSelfConfidence.com and search for Jamie's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I really just want to thank Jamie today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Jamie. Yeah, thank you. It was a pleasure. Not a problem. It was really great having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Get your free self-talk tape for building self-confidence by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. 